welcome back to this week's episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Uh, this week I have a Matchbox Lesney number 38C Honda motorcycle and trailer. Now a few of you might recognize this model from one of my previous mailbag videos. Um, this was an overpaint that I bought. Um, the reason that I went ahead and got it, despite the deplorable condition that it's in, is I paid $4 for this model. Um, for those of you that are familiar with uh, this particular series, um, the motorcycles tend to be really, really desirable. Um, and I've got a uh, Triumph motorcycle. Um, I've even got the little Lambretta scooter. I'm still on the hunt for the Harley Davidson. Um, those tend to be really deep pockets because uh, they are popular both amongst the diecast collectors as well as the Harley collectors. But uh, for the Honda model, um, you know these these in good condition will still typically go between fifteen and twenty dollars um, for the models. Uh, maybe in a box set, even as high as forty or fifty dollars, but. Um, Obviously no box on this one, and uh, really, really even questionable condition. Um, and I was really on the fence with this, but I do like a challenge. And uh, one of the things I was hoping with this, and one of the reasons that I'm not really scared of the overpainted models, is um, one, I, I've got a method that uh, I use to try to remove the paint. Um, something I picked up from another toy restorer. And uh, I'm going to give it a shot on this one. Um, in the case that I can remove the overpaint, more than likely the, the top coating on this is uh, an acrylic paint. Um, and the paint that came from the factory underneath is enamel. And so if I can use a remover that's going to affect the acrylic overpaint but not hurt the enamel that's underneath it, a lot of times I can actually get a very, very good condition model that's been protected over the years because of the top coating of overpaint. Um, now, if I'm lucky, that's what I get. Uh, in this particular model, um, I, I'm really unsure of what's underneath it, but we're gonna see if we can figure it out. If I pull the, uh, the overpaint off, and the model underneath is in really poor condition, which sometimes happens. You know, that's the reason that the child who owned this probably painted it in the first place was the model they had was all scratched up and didn't look good anymore. Um, so if that's the case, I can still do a full restoration on it. Um, you know, I haven't lost anything at that point. And so uh, I always try when I get an overpainted model um, you know, step one is to see, can I remove the overpaint and what's underneath it? Um, and then if it's in great shape, I may keep it just how it is. Um, if it's in really poor shape, then I'll go ahead and I'll restore it. So to begin the, uh, restoration efforts on this one, um, I'm not really sure that there's even a point in trying to clean it up. Um, so you can see there's so much overpaint. This this back wheel is completely stuck. It doesn't even turn anymore. Um, and the rubber on the tires themselves appears to have been painted. Um, and I think, um, at least from you know first cursory judgment, uh, the best uh, course of action on this is just to try to see if I can get some of that paint off to see where I'm starting with. Um, to do that, I'm going to use a little brake fluid. Um, now, what I've done is I just put it in this little container. I don't need a lot, just enough to uh, cover the model. And um, I'm going to let that sit for a few hours and see what happens. For the trailer, I needed a slightly larger container in order to get that all in. And um, just using the generic O'Reilly's brake fluid doesn't really matter any kind of brake fluid will, will work, um, but the fluid itself tends to break down and break apart acrylic paints. Um, it won't harm the metal or the uh, enamel underneath. And this has had a few hours to soak and you can kind of see that there's some color coming out in the fluid. That's a really good sign. Um, that means that some of that red paint that I'm seeing underneath the black um, is starting to 
dissolve. So we're going to take a stab at this and see if I can get anything to come off. Um, I've got a little soapy water, uh, just, you know, clean tap water with a little Dawn dish soap in it. And I'm going to use my powered toothbrush, um, my, my more power option. Yeah, and you can see that's coming right off. Um, so this, uh, these trailers were made in two versions. Uh, there was a reddish orange and a yellow. And I saw the little peaks of red. I wondered uh, if maybe this was an orange version. Um, but the bottom of the trailer is yellow. And so I think what this actually is, is a double overpaint. I think this was a, an originally yellow trailer that was first painted red and then at some later date was also painted black on top so uh, you can see the sides usually where the decals are um, that kind of protects whatever whatever's there and sometimes i find it uh, it doesn't cause the same quite uh, effective reaction uh, if there's a decal or a sticker there um, but it does look like the uh, the soap job with the brake fluid has you know done its job. Um, this paint underneath is definitely starting to uh, flake off and, and come loose. Um, you know, I always like starting with a toothbrush uh, just to see you know what's loose, what can I knock off right from the get go, um, and I may need to come back and scratch at this a little bit too. Uh, so we'll. We'll see how that shakes out. But for some reason on the inside here, it seems to uh, have been really, really effective. And you know, this is where, this is why I always try this method to begin with, because uh, you know, if that red color, whatever that was original was underneath and you know, the, the paint below it was in that good a shape, um, trying to just remove that little bit of over paint uh, and being able to salvage an original enamel underneath might be actually really nice. But you can see here on the edge, right there's where that decal is. If I just scratch at that with my finger now, you can see that all that all is coming loose. So obviously the reaction with the acrylic and the brake fluid has happened all over the model. Um, so just because it doesn't flake off right away with uh with the toothbrush doesn't mean that it won't come off so it looks to me like most of this is going to come out i'm guessing this side is, is probably the same yeah it's just coming off um so you know it's a really uh, terribly effective method um and I, I really appreciate getting turned on to it uh by one of the the other restoration channels that I watch um, and seems to work really well on this model. Now, the only thing I can't really tell so far yet is how much of that yellow paint underneath am I going to be able to salvage? Um, because as happens a lot of times, by the time I scratch off all of the overpaint, uh, what I actually am revealing underneath is a lot of times a model that's not in great shape and that's that's why they painted it um, so we'll see i'm going to keep working at this and uh, see how much i can get to come off and uh, what we're actually working with uh, once we get it all cleared on the uh, motorcycle Gave you that a little bit longer to soak than the trailer just because it seemed like the starting point for that was uh, quite a bit worse. And I'm going to start again with my More Power Ninja Turtle toothbrush and uh, see how much I can get to come off just with a, a light scrubbing. Um, this casting actually has quite a few little nooks and crannies and uh, I'm anticipating a much more difficult go at trying to get uh, all of this cleaned off. But it does look like it's loose. Um, I don't know that it's loose enough that it's all going to come off quite as well as uh, the trailer did. Um, but, you know, sometimes i got to put it back in for a little bit. Um, and like I said, I, I let this one soak a little bit longer because it does look like the paint is quite a bit thicker. Um, in some of the higher areas here, you can see it's kind of starting to come off. I'm 
getting little hints of the blue that's underneath. And, uh, you know, I, I have no idea um, what's underneath um, all of this black paint, what kind of condition I'm going to find this model in. So at this point, um, it, you know, we'll just take it one step at a time and kind of peel back the layers and see what we get to. So I need to use something a little more abrasive on this and I, you know, I don't want to risk damaging the original enamel paint. So I'm starting off just with a, uh, a wooden toothpick. Um, I find that that's, you know, soft enough um, to go through all the soft stuff that's on the top. Uh, but it won't scratch or damage anything that's underneath. And um, as you can see, when I get through that initial outer layer of black paint, um, I'm getting to a layer of white paint that's underneath the black, but on top of the blue. So it looks like, at least in this case, I was lucky enough to get a, another double overpaint um, on this casting. So. Whoever the child was that uh, had this little blue Honda originally, uh, first painted it white and then black on top of that. Um, so I'm not really sure uh, what the history was or the reason for that, but as you can see, um, our brake fluid has done a really good job on the black paint. Um, the white still appears pretty stuck on there. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and probably, you know, I'm going to clean off as much of this as I can because it seems like uh, anytime I can get exposed a little bit more, uh, let's that brake fluid work on it. Um, I'm still, I'm starting to get this back wheel to turn just slightly. It's still pretty gummed up in there in the works, but uh, I'm going to take this as far as I can get it um, and clean off everything that is loose. And then uh, it's probably going to need uh, a second soak in the brake fluid. So I've done a second soak on the trailer. And as you can see, uh, the brake fluid has definitely done its job, done its work. And all of that acrylic overpaint is uh, coming loose. Um, I use a couple different tools to try to get in and scratch at some of this, especially some of these harder to reach areas. Um, and this is one of the uh, little dental picks from um, a set that I got on Amazon. It's got a mix of different kinds of tips. This is kind of one of the angled flat tips. Um, and I'm, I'm really not uh, scratching at this too hard because again, I don't want to damage any of the original enamel uh, underneath this if I can avoid it. And so this gives me just enough uh, abrasiveness that I can go at that overpaint um, and scratch off all of that acrylic. Remember, the brake fluid's already done its job. It's, it's made that paint uh, where the bond is broken and it's, you know, it's not stuck to anything anymore. Um, and it's not permanently going to stick at all anymore. Um, it's just still in place and I just got to scratch it off. So this is really where uh, a lot of patience comes in and is very helpful. So I can, uh, I can continue to just kind of pick at all of these areas where that overpaint is coming loose and uh, get this cleaned up and back to the original yellow. Um, but as I've uncovered more and more of this, I'm starting to see just how play-worn uh, this original trailer was. And I'm starting to question that even if I get all of this overpaint off, um, spend the time to, to get all of this kind of loose top coat of uh, acrylic off of here, um, I'm not sure that this is going to be in good enough shape, uh, the, the original casting and the original paint, uh, to, to keep it. Um, and if it's not in good shape, and I'm going to do a restoration anyway, um, then I don't need to continue to try to salvage the original paint underneath. And um, I may just take this right into a chemical stripper um, and such a strip the original back down to uh, bare metal. So, you know, like I said, it's always worth a shot to see if I can salvage what's underneath it. Um, and if I can't, we'll restore it. 
So here you can see um, after we got everything cleaned off uh, what the condition was of that uh, yellow trailer. Um, I was really hoping that more of the factory yellow paint would stay in place and uh, it actually large areas were already gone and uh, there were quite a few areas that were very loose. Um, so even you know as I picked all the overpaint out of all these spots um, unfortunately a lot of the original yellow was coming with it um, and so that's just you know unfortunate um, I'm not going to be able to uh, salvage the original yellow on this um, but you know it's okay I, I've done restorations on these before and um, you know this is a pretty easy casting and it, it really uh, turns out nice the, the most difficult thing on uh, this particular model is that textured floor and uh, getting all of that original paint out uh, between all the little nubbies on there if i don't when i uh, repaint it all of that detail gets just totally swallowed up and lost so um, if i am going to do a repaint on this going to have to get this original casting really, really super clean before I do it. The uh, motorcycle, uh, on the other hand, has actually cleaned up really fairly well. Um, you can see there's a few areas where the original blue paint is still intact, the kind of shiny metallic blue, um, especially inside of the wheel well and kind of down underneath the seat where it was more protected. Um, and then all these little recessed pockets and areas in here have the original shiny metallic blue on them. Um, unfortunately, that's about the only redeeming quality on this. Uh, most of the surface area has uh, very little of the original paint, if not no original paint. Um, and there are still a couple pockets down in here, especially these really deep crevices where there's still little remnants of the, the white and black uh, acrylic overpaints in here. Um, and to get that out, I'm just using one of the sharper little nodes or sharper little tools from my uh, dental pick set um, and you can see even down in the pipes and all these little crevasses everywhere on this casting um, I, I gotta get all of that cleaned out if I'm gonna repaint it so um, I'm gonna keep working through this and just cleaning up all those little pits and everything uh, I want this really really super clean um, in, in order to prepare it for a, uh, a repaint So here you have the uh, wheels, and uh, these are pretty gummed up with paint as well. Um, and I was able to get most of that to come off uh, with a little citrus strip. Um, so they actually cleaned up pretty nicely. Um, the original tires are still a little rough. Uh, you can see they're kind of grayed out. I don't know if some of that is just uh, wear and age. Um, they still fit tight on the rims. So I don't think I'm going to have to make any modifications and I should be able to reuse these, uh, these original plastics, but uh, they don't look great. Um, so I'm going to use a method that I've shown on the channel before um, that works really, really good to restore these uh, plastic wheels. Um, here you can see the, the trailer wheels are also not in great shape. Um, and my method for fixing this is to use a son of a gun. This is a plastic restore. Um, it's made for the automotive industry and works great on my big cars, but I use it on my little cars too. And so I'm just going to put a couple squirts of son of, son of a gun down in this, uh, this little Tupperware container and let those soak for a while. So all that I have to do to uh, clean these up is just a little buff with a paper towel. Uh, and you can see the son of a gun's done a really good job uh, revitalizing that plastic and get the nice shiny black plastic back yet. Yeah, the, the trailer wheels look good. 
the uh, still got some paint on these, but it's coming off. Um, that the motorcycle tires are you know, just look like they're almost brand new, and since they still fit tight to the rims, these are ready to go back on the bike. So up next, I've got the reveal on the restored bike. Now, I know, I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look anything like the original bikes did. It's black, it's not blue, what happened? Well, there's a very good reason for that. You know, this was an overpaint. I mean, this was uh, loved by some child and that child wanted a black bike. And so I wanted to kind of take a little bit different approach to this one and that was, what if it, I restored it back to what the child wanted it to be? Uh, rather than what it was originally. Um, and so I wanted to keep some of the inspiration from the original. You know, it was a heavy metallic blue, um, and now it's a metallic black. Um, I did leave the, the trailer original. Uh, I felt like at least part of this needed to be an original restoration. Uh, I haven't put the stickers on. Uh, wheels got cleaned up really nice. Uh, happy with how that turned out. Um, and, you know, I may not put the Honda stickers back on. I'm actually thinking a, a little number seven might look really nice to, to match the uh, number seven on the front of the motorcycle. So I may not be done with this one yet. Um, but, you know, I wanted to try a little bit different take on this and uh, restore the bike back to what it was intended to be by the child that owned it. So I do have one more person I want to thank for uh, inspiration in um, doing this restoration, and that is uh, Polly over at Fat Guy Productions. Um, I saw a video from him, um, it's been a couple weeks back, of a Maserati restoration that he did uh, that had been a childhood overpaint. And um, he took this approach of kind of doing the restoration, but restoring it um, professionally, but in the colors that the, the child had intended. Um, and I thought that was a really cool approach, um, a really neat way to uh, think about a restoration. And so that's why I wanted to um, take the track I did on this, uh, this little Honda here. Um, the other reason I did it is this is just one in my collection. Um, I do have a, I would say good to very good uh, condition copy of the original Honda in the met shiny metallic blue that it came in. Um, and this is kind of one of the mid series on the Honda trailers. This does have the decals, not the stickers. Um, as you can see, it's pretty chipped up, pretty plain, play worn, but um, it is a complete bike and uh, one thing I did notice when I did my restoration is my model is missing a little kickstand that lets these things sit up on their own. And um, I don't think that's a piece that I can get reproduction, so um, I'm going to try to 3D print one. And I may shoot a quick little follow-up video to this series um, if I can do that successfully. So um, I've got this one, and then... Uh, I'm most proud of this one. So this is a near mint. We got just a little, few little chips on the bike itself. Um, original Honda um, with the kickstand intact. This is just a great little bike. Super shiny on the wheels. Um, really, really happy to pick this up. And then it had the uh, the earlier model of the orange trailer um, and for all you Harley fans out there the, uh, the black bike on the orange trailer just looks killer um, and I, I very closely considered when I did the restoration on this trailer um, doing it in the orange but uh, I wanted to keep since I was 
go in a different direction on this um, on this restoration, I did want to keep at least something from the original um, true to the original. So I figured, well, I'll keep the trailer in the original yellow and I'll do the custom on the bike. So um, thanks again to uh, Polly over at Fat Guy Productions. Um, if you haven't seen his channel, check it out. I'll put a link down in the description um, so that you can see the Maserati that he did. But uh, thanks for the idea. I thought that was a really cool approach to uh, restoring an overpaint. Um, and I think this is probably just the first of uh, a couple of these that I will do um, in that same That's going to do it for the restoration on the uh, Honda motorcycle. Um, as always, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to click that like button down below. Leave us a comment on what you enjoyed on this one things you think I did right, things you think I did wrong, other things you'd like to see me try to tackle in the future. Um, and as always, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Um, helps you keep in touch with everything we're doing on the channel. And uh, join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.